literary and epigraphic evidence show that shreni or gilds formed an important feature of economic life of people in ancient india the gilds were associations of merchants and craftsmen in the same profession or dealing in the same commodity each guild had its heads and followed its own rules with respect to quality and prices in order to regulate their business on the basis of mutual goodwill these guilds also served as banks and kept public deposits from the public on fixed interest rates the merchants communities were organized in groups called shreni or guild under the head shreshti mobile or caravan trading corporations of inter-regional traders formed another type of mercantile group called sartha with its leaders called sarthavaha almost all craft occupations were also organized into guilds under a head called jethak or pramukh on the basis of information from different texts it can be inferred that artisans were organized into at least 24 guilds most of the artisans were limited to the mathura region and western deccan areas that were on the trade routes that led to the western coastal ports the yakivalkya smriti talks about the qualification and powers of the head of the guilds according to the text the guilds also probably had a judicial role according to buddhist texts the heads of the guilds had a good rapport with the king and used to accompany the king as part of the official entourage and sometimes were even appointed as mahamatas in nigrod jatak it is mentioned that certain officials called bhandagrik were designated to maintain a record of the conventions and transactions of the guilds some guilds even used coins and seals which reflect the importance of guilds of this period some seals with the captions nigam nigamasya have been found at the site of rajghat seals with the legends of gavayaka signifying milkman's guild bhitt seals with the legend of shula falaikanam signifying guild of the arrowhead makers and ahichetra seals with the legend of kumbhakar signifying pottery makers guild mahavastu and milindpanho mention 75 different occupations many of which were transformed into guilds the jataks mention the number of guilds as 18 The growing importance of guilds is attested by the fact that lawgivers like Gautam and Manu recognized the rights of traders, cultivators, horsemen, artisans, etc. to frame rules for their respective associations. These rules were to be taken into consideration by king in giving legal decision. Manu refers to Shreni Dharma as having the force of law. The guilds beginning from 6th century BC gradually gained importance in economy they became crucial factor in organization of production the vast majority of artisans joined guild since it was difficult for them to compete as individual against the guilds with increasing demand for particular commodities and the consequent necessity to raise their output some guilds began to employ hired labor and slaves leading guilds were those of potters metal workers carpenters etc their size can be gauged from the fact that one wealthy potter named sadalput had owned 500 potters shop in addition he organized his own distribution and owned large number of boats which took pottery from workshops to various parts on ganges with increase in trade and commerce the major guilds grew even larger guild fixed rules of work and quality of finished product and its price to safeguard both the artisan and customer the guilds also controlled the prices of manufactured articles and these either depended on quality of work or were calculated according to fixed scale many guilds operated at local as well as on larger country level certain guilds were also involved in foreign trade Ayyavdal a guild from South India operated at longer long distance trade Mani Gramam another guild composed of multiple nationalities undertook foreign trade the royal connection of the guild was also a significant factor which influenced the role played by guild in economy royalty had a financial interest in guild investment in commercial enterprise brought larger returns 
royalty thus had interest in ensuring well-being of guild another fact which emerges from inscription is that guild could act as banker financier and trustee as well generally these functions were carried out by different category of merchants known as shrestin in north india and chetyars in south india if you want to know about any other topic please leave it in the comment box so that i can come back with it if you have liked the episode please like share and subscribe thank you